For researchers, there is much to be learned from twins, who are as just alike as genetics will allow. This morning, we have a different sort of story about twins, told to us by Erin Moriarty of 48 Hours, who, it should be noted, is a twin herself. Here she is with her sister, Sheila. <laughs> On a recent afternoon at London's Heathrow Airport, are you nervous at all? Maybe. 11-year-old Evie Hanlon Moores stood impatiently alongside her mother. Just waiting. She was waiting for someone she hadn't seen for nearly a year. They're here. Despite the long separation, she had no trouble recognizing her. Oh, oh I got right up in the Fine. <laughs> you look more alike now than you did when we saw you in October. <laughs> As you might have guessed, Evie Hanlon Moores and Eva Chia are identical <laughs> twins, but they live 10,000 miles apart. Isn't this a very strange situation to explain to anyone? Yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> it became our normal. Yeah, didn't it? it did. Yeah. A new kind of blended family. Hmm. Mm. This unusual family saga began more than 10 years ago in Brisbane, Australia. Dee Cridlin had just brought her newly adopted daughter, Eva, home from China when she saw what she thought were pictures of her child posted by another mother on a website for adoptive parents. How much did the picture that Joe put online look like your daughter? Well, I thought it was my daughter. Dee immediately wrote the other mother, who lived near Bath, England. I opened my email, read the email from Dee, and just thought, oh. <laughs> jo Hanlon Moores had adopted her child, Evie, three months earlier. I just burst into tears because it's exactly the same face. What both mothers suspected, a DNA test later confirmed. Can we please have the fact that their parents gave the girls similar names is just an odd coincidence. <laughs> Evie and Eva are among more than 100,000 babies, mostly girls, abandoned since the late 1970s when China instituted its one child per family policy. With orphanages full, International adoptions were allowed in the early 1990s, but when demand for healthy Chinese babies outweighed the supply, siblings were separated. China has never had an official policy on the adoption of twins. Do you think there are a large number of these twins that have been separated at birth who don't know that each other exists? If twins occur in approximately one in 80 births naturally, then you have to figure if, if hundreds of thousands of girls have been abandoned, there's a fair number out there. As many as 1,500 sets of twins, both fraternal and identical by some estimates. I think this is Joanne, and I think this is Elizabeth. And you would be wrong. wrong. Nancy wrong. Siegel is a professor at Cal Joanne. State Fullerton and director of the Twin really? Studies Center. While the forced separation of all those twins is certainly heartbreaking, for Siegel, there is a silver lining. It does give me an opportunity to track development in a very, very unique way. Such a large pool of twins, raised apart, offers researchers a rare chance to answer an age-old question. How much of who we are comes from nature? How much from nurture? Studying twins tells us about all of us. We can really hone in on the extent to which genes and environments play a role in different behaviors. 25-year-old Sarah Heath, adopted from China in 1992, grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. She was a freshman at Georgetown when a classmate called her by the wrong name. This guy came up to me and thought I was someone else. But he did really recognize her. It just wasn't Sarah. It was someone that I'd gone to high school with. He sent a picture of Sarah to Selena Kapinski, a girl he had grown up with in New York City, who was now going to college in Ohio. Did you think that the girl in that picture looked like you? If I didn't know I didn't like own those clothes, like I would think that was me. 
Because of several misconnections on social media, it took nearly four years before Selena and Sarah finally agreed to meet for a rather awkward dinner. We kind of always joke how our relationship comes off like a weird, like blind date. Normally when you meet someone for dinner, if you don't know them, you know, you probably tell them like what you're wearing or something. But in this case, it was sort of like, well, look for the person that looks like you. <laughs> The probability of twin is 99.99%. Yes. yes. A DNA test confirmed they are identical. I think this one's interesting. Okay. And they recently became the 18th set of twins adopted from China to enter into Siegel's twin study. If you're looking at each other, I'm curious, are you looking for the similarities or do you see the differences? I think there's a little bit of both. You know, you feel self-conscious. You're like, wait, is that what I look like when I eat pasta? Like, do I laugh like that? Do I drink water like that? <laughs> Their ice cream's actually really good. That sounds amazing. Yeah. And it is kind of like looking in a mirror, except there is no mirror. <laughs> After two years, they're still getting to know each other, although some similarities are already apparent. Your favorite food? <laughs> We both just really like food in general. Yeah. <laughs> and as you can see for yourself, they share a similar fashion sense. Does it feel a little surreal? Absolutely. <laughs> Still. Like this one is at our birthday, maybe? 17 year old so, Lily McLeod out. lives four hours away from her identical twin sister, Jillian Shaw. I'm like thankful for like even the little visits. But neither girl remembers a time when they didn't know they were sisters. I don't think we look alike. I don't think we look that much alike. Do you think we look alike? You definitely look like twins. Jillian is growing up in Windsor, Canada, with an older brother and sister. I'm left-handed writing. I'm right-handed. Well, I'm, we're mirror image twins. Yeah, I part my hair this way. She parts it that way. Lily, an only child, lives outside Toronto. For 16 years, the families have taken turns making the long drive between their homes. Hi! <laughs> Lily's parents, Kirk and Allison, and Jillian's parents, Mike and Lynette, met in China in 2000 when they were adopting the girls. They noticed the babies looked so much alike that they ordered DNA tests when they got back to Canada. How would you describe what you got along with a baby? Well, we always say we uh, got a baby and we also got an extended family, because you know, they are like family for us. Hello. Jillian, Hello. did you see what Aunt Allison has in her fruit bowl? Yeah, pomegranate. Your pomegranate. Uh, <laughs> Both couples believe the orphanage suspected the girls were twins like and did what they could. <laughs> this orphanage put these little girls together knowing that both these girls were going to the same group in Ontario. You don't think that was by coincidence. They, they want hope it. we discover. <laughs> Remember, I used to love this. Yeah, you can have it. Do you think they have a true special bond that's unusual? Lily would say that having Jillian in her life is probably the most important relationship she has. That brings us back to Eva's mom from Australia, Dee Cridlin. <laughs> She understood just how important that sibling relationship is and was so troubled when she first learned of her daughter's separation from her sister that she considered giving up Eva so she could grow up with Evie in England. Because I had already three sons, mm. we talked about. <laughs> Why does that make you so emotional? Um, because at the time, I would have done just the right thing by a child to let her uh, live with her sibling, but now I couldn't imagine living without her. And this is Eva! Instead, Dee and Joe made a promise to keep the girls in contact. They met for the first time at three and a half years old. Uh, this is the main road. And when we met them... Oh, they're two different ones! It was just the fourth time that the girls had been together. And yet, there's no question in Eva's mind about just how similar they are. <laughs> You're exactly like Evie! Well, duh! We're basically the same person. What we find with twins raised apart is they are as alike in personality 
as twins raised together. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but what it means is that the similarity among people living together is due to shared genes, not shared environments. And Siegel says twins raised apart may only become more alike in time. It's because they have the chance to gravitate toward environments and experiences apart from what their parents want. On our birthdays. But for right now, these parents are offering the right kind of nurture to allow like nature to take its course. I have always thought that nature was the stronger of nature and nurture, but I had no idea until I saw them. Mm. The things like the laugh and the yes. run, the mannerisms and the words they choose. It's unbelievable, the things you inherit. It made me rethink everybody. 